Okay, Assalamualaikum and good morning or good evening to some people from the other side of the world. Um, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Let's just uh, crack on with the webinar because it's already been delayed by so nearly an hour now. Okay, so um, before we start the webinar, I think it's best that I show you guys how to um, set up the, what do you call this, the SoftFX simulator. Okay, so let me just, um, hang on, let me just share. Okay, so um, first things first, uh, I'm just going to show you guys how to install the Forex uh, for simulator. Obviously, the one that I shared is the demo version, so you can only uh, enter, as uh, I think, about four lots maximum, and that's it. And then there's a, a, a time limit to that. Okay, so first things first, when you you open the data folder and then MQL4. Once you open MQL4, you go to experts and you just uh, install the simulator over here. And after that, you just uh, refresh this um, export advisor and that will, that will make things work for you. So, okay, so let's say you're gonna you want to do a back test and you wanted to do it on a multi time frame analysis. So, what you do here is uh, you use the MetaTrader and then you pick whatever pair you want to do. Let's say, for example, um, uh, USD CAD. Okay? So, this is your starting balance. For example, um, how much you want to start with. Let's say, let's go for $100 over there because the minimum is $100. And the minimum time frame that I want to look into is about M15, okay, or M5, totally up to you. Uh, BIP size, totally up to you. Uh, leverage, you can change up to 500, whichever you want to use. And I usually like to use 30 days back um, for the initial history on the charts. Okay, so spread, um, depending on your particular... Um, uh, what do you call this, uh, broker. So you start the simulator and then you generate it. Once that's done, you start the simulator. Okay, now the simulator has started. What you want to do is um, you go to charts and obviously you start with M15. You add that one over there. You open up M30, H1, H4. Okay, so let's say you're a scalper like me and you want you just want to go up to that level or maybe daily. Okay, so once you've done that, you open it uh, one by one. A bit of a lag here. Um, so it, it adds over, the, over there. And then you open M30, H1, H4, and daily. Once you're done with that, then you go to each uh, each uh, time frame over here, and then you just load whatever setup you have. Okay. All right. So basically, the daily bit is not yet finished, so you just have to let it run for a while. But as far as already started. Um, you have M30 over here, uh, sorry, H1, and then M30, and then you have M15. So, for example, um, you have, um, let's just, uh, this is just an example, okay? So, if you want to do, if you want to sell, for example, um, you have M15 here, and you want to play it, so usually, you can adjust the speed in accordance to whatever it is. Okay, so if I know it's going up, so I'm just gonna buy and let it run for a while, or you can speed up the process. Next bar, next bar, 
so something like that. So, and then you can see over here at the bottom, this is your floating profit and loss, and that's your equity. You can also uh, set pending by sub sell sub, um, but basically you can only for the demo version you can only use as as much uh, I think about four maximum. So I think that's about it. Um, if you want to close a position, you can close all or close last. You can see your your um, trades over here on this tab. So if you want to close this position, you just go to close. And then that's it. It's added to your uh, profit and loss. And obviously, if you want to do multi-time frame analysis, then you can switch through because all because uh, the market is moving in accordance to uh, on all the, the same time frame. So if you want to speed up the process, you can do that. So obviously, it's speeding up like this. So you can do that, and then you can pause and you can check the multi time frames that you want to do. So obviously if it breaks H4 then obviously you know that it might be a possible re entry on a daily, something like that. So I think that's about that with the um, simulator. So uh let me just close that. Okay. All right. So um if you have any question throughout the webinar just uh, pause it on the on the message box on the chat box i'll see if I, if i can answer that um okay so first things first um obviously uh during the webinars what i always do is um i start with uh candlestick formation kind of break and reject so uh, these are the basic stuff that we really need to um, understand uh, fully before we uh, do our daily trading. Okay, let me just um, open again. The okay. So, um, I'm just going to go straight to the webinar. If um, you lose um, visual or audio at any point, just um, put it on the chat box so I can not take notice of that. Okay, um, so now um, I add in here some stuff for basically for the candlestick formation. Um, I put on four moving averages here, Mahi 5, which is moving average high 5, Mahi 10, which is moving average high 10, and obviously the low indicators at the bottom. Mahi 5 and 10 are sell indicators, and Malo 5 and 10 are buy indicators. Let's say, for example, this is an H1 time frame, and the time now is at 8 p.m., and there's a new candle that opens at this particular price. <coughs> you have to understand that the, that the, the market, the, the chart, has a what you call an X and Y axis. So basically here at the bottom you have um, time, sorry, that's the best um, handwriting I can do with this one. And over here on this side is you have the price, okay? So basically as time passes by the price moves along uh, in accordance to the time. So that's what you have for um, for the for what you call for the forex charts, okay? So you have the buy indicators at the bottom, you have the sell indicators at the top, and at 8 p.m. on an H1 time frame, you have the candle open at this particular price, let's say, for example, at the $1 uh, price, okay? So let's say in, in, uh, in 15 minutes time, at 8.15, the price moves downwards, so let's say for example the price went down to about 80 cents, another 30 minute, another 50 minutes passed by, the price rose up to $1.20, okay? And what it does that um, the initial sell candle, it looks like a sell candle, becomes a buy candle. So what happens is this candle open will never will never change, will never move. Even how, how much the movement of the candle does, where the candle opens, it will never move. 
So as soon as the candle travels down here and went back up, it will leave a trace, like a footprint that tells you that this candle has traveled down to that uh, lowest uh, price mark. Okay, so this is what we call a candle shadow or candle wick. Okay, uh, moving on. Another 15 minutes pass by. The price continue to rose up to maybe two dollar plus, and goes through my five and ten. And then another 15 minutes goes by. Obviously, it went back down to this particular price level. So at 9 p.m., this candle closes here. And obviously, it's exactly the same as what happened down here. When the price rose up and it goes back down, it left um, a footprint, a shadow, or a wick. Okay? So this is what we call a candle reject. Because the candle couldn't manage to break through these moving averages. So it works with moving averages and it also works for Bollinger Band as we can we will see later on. Okay, um, so the lowest price is at this point of uh, at this end of the candle week and also the high, high price is at the highest point. And obviously what is left of the candle is the candle body this is very important because we need to know that um, we need to understand that um, candle break requires the body for it to break and also for rejection you need the candle wick. We don't really need to know about much about the range. So after an hour at 9 p.m. a new candle opens exactly a beam the candle close of this candle. So basically a candle that opens out of the bottom and closes at the top, this is a buy candle. Okay, so the buy candle um, closes at 9 p.m. and obviously uh, 9 p.m. another candle opens as exactly as where the price has um, closed before. So it kind of closed here, candle open. Okay, but sometimes how come there are other candles that opens on a different level? So um, the only rational reasoning for that is during the process of um, candle open, uh, candle close, and the opening of a new candle, the price uh, rose or uh, goes down in a split second. That the the new registered price on the open of the new candle is much lower or much higher than the previous one. So I mean that's that's how I interpret it. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so at 9 p.m. a new candle opens. So 50 minutes pass by, it rolls up, uh, crossing my 5 and my 10. And then another 30 minutes pass by, it falls, price falls down, and left a shadow on my 5 and 10, which is a rejection. Okay? And obviously it went down to this lowest price over here. And then another 15 minutes come by, it closes at this particular area. So what we can see here is um, there are two two, port, two points here um, that indicates that this is a rejection and this is a candle break because this candle body breaks the moving average low. If the candle um, breaks the moving average low, which are by indicators, then obviously this is a um, candlestick direction. It tells you that the price is go is gonna keep going down. Okay. So um, I just noticed that um, there's a um, discrepancy here. Uh, it's my mistake that um, the pink color one is smaller five and the white color one is smaller ten. Forgive me for that. Okay. So um, basically, this is a rejection and. When the price rejects a sell indicator, this means that this is a sell entry or a re-entry. And when the price breaks the buy indicator, then this is a candlestick direction. It tells you that it's going to co continue to sell. So I think that's about it with um, candlestick formation. Is there any question if anybody 
do not understand that part. Is everyone uh, okay with that uh, bit? Okay, so um, moving on. Now um, let's talk about um, BBMA basics, okay? So obviously the name BBMA originated from two different um, uh, functions, two different indicators, which is Bollinger Bands and Moving Averages. So, um, if you can check on your indicators list, Bollinger Band and Moving Averages are within the trend category. Okay, so keep this in mind because later on I will I will touch that again. Okay, so basically, Moving Averages and Bollinger Bands tells you the trends. So obviously, it will it will be an indicator for you to tell you where the market is heading. Okay, so let's add on the first um, indicator, which is the Bollinger Band. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, um, Bollinger Band. The main function of the Bollinger Band is to contain all prices and all the moving averages within the Bollinger Band. Okay, that's how I uh, that's how I interpret the the main function of the Bollinger Band. Every time the price, every time the candle or a moving averages, it's outside the Bollinger Band, it is an anomaly. Okay, it's not normal. So it tells you a different story. Okay, so I really need uh, you guys to understand this um, function that the Bollinger Band, its main function is to contain all the prices, all the candles within the Bollinger Band and also the moving averages. However, you have to understand that the Bollinger Band can control the movement of um, of the candles and also the, the moving averages by telling it where to go okay just in case later on I will I will explain uh, how this function works okay so um, the Bollinger Band has um, five lines basically um, from the BBMA notes that you have obviously there's only three but um, I'm using the old BBMA method, which uh, utilizes the deviation one. Okay, so um, for those who doesn't know about deviation one, so Bollinger Bands exactly the same. Period twenty, deviation two, apply to close, whatever color you want, and you just add uh, levels zero point five by uh, clicking to this tab, and minus zero point five. So I just use the dash so that it makes more visual to me. So what it, what it is, what it, what division one is, is obviously um, a Bollinger Band division one. Let's say for example I wanted to add a Bollinger Band and let me just delete this. Okay. And let's just put division one over there. It will fit exactly where the division one line was earlier on. Okay. So it's exactly as a uh, uh, Bollinger Band Division 1. Okay, so this is um, top BB. So just to make it quicker, just call it BB. Top BB Division 1, middle BB Division 1, and lower BB. From top BB to mid BB is a uh, buy zone, and from mid BB to low BB is the sell zone. The Bollinger Band has two different types which is very obvious here. This is a momentum blinger band. Okay. And this is a sideways blinger band. Although I say that it is sideways, but it is still moving up. I will I will explain later on how how this works, okay? So, uh momentum blinger band is very obvious. It's very um erratic uh, top and low BB is wide open is uh, pointing top and pointing the low and obviously what you have here is a momentum Hang on, let me just okay this is what we call a momentum 
the main reason why I started the webinar with um, candlestick formations, break and rejects, is very important because we need to understand what candle it is and where it opens and where it closes. For example, this is a cell candle that opens at the top and closes at the bottom. So obviously, this candle over here is a momentum because a momentum is defined as a candlestick that closes outside the Blinger band. And obviously, it's outside the Blinger band. So this is a momentum Blinger band. This is also a momentum Blinger band because it's open and closed is outside the Blinger band. Same as this one. However, this one is not a momentum Blinger band because it's closed is inside the Blinger band. Opens at the bottom, a buy candle opens at the bottom and closes at the top. Okay, so you have to understand this. And here, you can already see um, the main function of the Blinger band is to contain all the prices within the Blinger band. So, this candle over here is way far out from the Blinger band. Now, the Blinger band will tell these candles to move sideways so that the candles are back inside the blinger band so this is the this is the main function of the blinger band <laughs> okay so uh, momentum blinger band is quite straightforward however um, let's talk about the sideways blinger band okay let me just uh, find a good example over here okay let's take this this bit over here okay so this is what we call a sideways blinger band. Although it's moving downwards here and going upwards, it's still considered as a sideways blinger band. So during the sideways blinger band, you have to understand that every time the candle break or reject top BB or low BB, it will um, return back to the middle BB. This is what we call extreme B. Okay. So extreme B happens when the price rejects or breaks the Bollinger Band when uh, the Bollinger Band is sideways uh, Bollinger Band. Okay. So as you can see here, the candle rejects and goes towards mid BB. Candle breaks and goes towards mid BB. Candle break goes towards <coughs> mid BB. Okay. So, why why is it that um, I say that um, extreme B, it tells you that if the candle breaks or reject the top or low BB, it goes to mid BB. But how come sometimes it doesn't go straight to mid BB um, directly? Okay? <coughs> so, this is what we need to understand. Okay? When the when the Bollinger band is sideways, the division one is active. So when it's active, it it acts like a dynamic support and resistance. So it's one of those lines that the candle must break or reject. Let's say, for example, on this particular area here, the candle has uh, broke through uh, sideways Bollinger band, and its main target is to go to mid BB. However, it did not achieve going to mid BB and goes back up. So, uh, what's the um, explanation over here? So, obviously, when the candle breaks top BB, the candle will try to go up. Obviously, it couldn't go up because it is a sideways blinker band. It has to go to go back inside. That's the main function of the blinker band over there, telling you that the the price has to go sideways and downwards back inside the blinger band. Okay. However, this candle over here rejected division one and has to go back up. And the new candle opens, tries to go up, it couldn't manage. It tries to go down, it couldn't manage to break through division one and goes back up again. On the third candle here, it managed to break through division one but couldn't manage to break mid BB. So it has to go back up and a new candle opens here, tries to break division one, it couldn't manage, and it closes over here. And a new candle again opened here, it tries to 
go to me BB couldn't manage to do that it broke through division one and closes on the top so its next target is obviously the top BB however the next candle couldn't manage to do that and also the second candle doesn't manage to do that so this candle here break broke through division one and mid BB so that that uh, finishes the cycle of um, extreme B okay so that's how extreme B works so even over here this few candles here this is what you call uh, extreme division one basically um, the candles couldn't break through the candles reject division one this is an H1 time frame so for um, about five hours the candle couldn't break through division one okay so that's um, another example of um, extreme over there. Extreme B is when the candle break or when the candle reject or break top or low BB of a sideways pulling a band. And obviously here is a good example of uh, extreme division one. So um, so far, it's very um, uh, just to make it easier for you to understand that if the candle starts over here, it will try to break division one. If you couldn't manage to do that okay can it manage to do that then obviously it has to go back up then when it goes back up then it's extreme B again so when it managed to break through division one it couldn't manage to do that then it has to go back up again and if it doesn't break through division one then the next candle will try to break through mid BB so that's how that's how the division one works and that's how the sideways pulling band works so far with um, the um, the function of the blinger band um, sideways and momentum blinger band is does anybody have any questions on that <coughs> okay um, this is not um, within your notes but I'm just going to share my own um, opinion on sideways pulling a band and also momentum blinger band. What I notice with uh, momentum blinger band and also sideways pulling a band that during sideways pulling a band there is a component of momentum and during momentum blinger band there's also a component of sideways pulling a band. Okay, what do I mean by this? You have to understand that the market doesn't move on a straight line like this. Okay? The market travels up and then it creates a sideways before it continues to go up again and then obviously when it's up it's gonna make another sideways and then when you go down then you're gonna have another sideways again so this is how um, the market move However, what you need to understand is when there's a momentum like this, as soon as you see the price is going sideways, then obviously you know here that the price is going to go sideways because this is an extreme because the candle closes too far away from the Blinger band. So when you have this, then obviously the sideways Blinger band has already started over here. Okay? So what what do I mean by this? Okay. Although this one is a momentum Bollinger band, there's also a component of sideways Bollinger band within the momentum Bollinger band. Okay. If you look into M15, you will see that the Bollinger band is already sideways. Okay. So that's a component of. Um, sideways within the momentum linger band <clears throat> excuse me um, still not well okay so here this is a um, sideways linger band as I mentioned earlier this is already a sideways linger band every time the linger band touches the top and low BB it already uh, is it's going to be an extreme B, okay? So this is a moment uh, sideways Bollinger band. Okay. Okay.
Okay, let me just fix this for you. Okay, so even though the price is moving upwards and downwards, this is con still considered as a sideways blinger band. And this here is a momentum blinger band. So during sideways, there's also component of a uh, um, uh, momentum blinger band. Uh, sorry, a uh, cell component of momentum. For example, this here, there's a, the top and low BB is open. So this is a, a little bit of component of a momentum. However, this is a sideways blinger band. That's why the price has to go back to middle BB over here. How come it took so long for the price to go to middle BB? because of division one as you can see there hasn't been any candle that managed to break through division one until this candle over here so um if you guys can see that then uh, you understand how the blinger band works so sometimes it's quite uh useful to take away all the moving averages just to understand what's happening um within the candles okay so even over here Every time the price touches the low BB, it has to go back to middle BB. See, it's, it's tried to go back to middle BB, but it was rejected by division one until this point over here. Okay, so until this point is back to middle BB, then it can continue its course again. Okay, so we have to understand uh, those two bits over there. Okay, so this one over here is a sideways. However, this part here is a momentum bling a band because both top and bottom are wide open okay so i think that's the bling bar uh, bling band part so let's talk about uh, moving averages so before i move to moving averages uh, is there any questions Okay, um, since everyone's clear with that, let's move on to moving average high, uh, MA5 high. As a BBMA trader, I always tell my friends that um, we really need to understand and we really need to remember all of these functions, especially Bollinger Band. What is its main function? How many types are there? And uh, what happens during uh, sideways? What happens during momentum? And now we add in on uh, MA5 high. MA5 high in your notes has two functions. And you, you really have to understand and remember all of this. First function is to detect extreme A cell. Okay, because this is a cell indicator, then obviously when MA5 high is outside the blinger band, then it indicates, it detects uh, extreme cell. Okay, and the second function is a point of entry cell. Okay, as you can see here, as um, as I explained earlier on, uh, during a kind of break and reject, every time the price reject uh, an indicator, obviously this is a cell indicator, then obviously it's a entry cell. It's a cell entry, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, every time the price rejects the the cell indicator, especially, uh, not especially, focus on MA5 high, MA5 high and MA5 low, okay? The price has to reject or break these two first before MA10, okay? So, um, the first two functions is, sorry, the two functions as per your notes is it detects extreme A cell and also a point of entry cell, as you can see here. There's a few points here that tells you that this is a point of entry for cell. Okay. Um, under my notes, I have three because every time the price rejects or does not travel within the candle body, then the price will keep on moving downwards. So I use it as a candlestick direction. Okay. If it's not within the candle body, it doesn't break. Uh, if it rejects, then obviously the price can go down. Until it breaks over here, then the price goes up. Rejects again, the price goes down. 
it breaks again, it goes up again, and breaks, goes up, reject, goes down, breaks, goes up. So this is a candlestick direction. It tells you where the market is moving. So that's the third function of the MA5 high. Okay, um, I'll add in uh, MA5, uh, MA10 high. Okay, just um, bear with me on this. Okay, so um, MA10 high on your notes, there's only one function is to um, give a much more um, stronger re-entry, a more valid re-entry, such as this. Both MA5 and MA10 high are rejected by the price, as you can see here. So these are uh, much more uh, stronger re-entries. Okay? And the other, the other function that I always use for this one is obviously the MA crossovers. So as you can see here, there's a MA5 high and 10 crossover. Whenever MA5 high, MAHI 5 is below MAHI 10, this is a sell mode. Okay, so it's going to continue, the price is going to continue going downwards. As soon as, you can see here, this is a sell mode. As soon as there's another crossover, MAHI 5 is above MAHI 10, then this is a buy crossover. So this is a buy mode. Okay, and then you can see here again, there's another confirmation that the price is going down. So we really need to train our eyes to see all of, all of these small details. Uh, so that our we will have a much more better um, decision making and our analysis is much more uh, better. Okay, so apart from giving a much more better re-entry, it also gives us uh, another point which is the uh, MA crossovers. Okay, so let's talk about MALO5. MALO5 is exactly the same as MAI5. It's obviously uh, early detection for extreme A buy, okay? And also a point of entry for buy. Every time the candle rejects the MA5 low, my, my low 5, then it is a point of entry buy, okay? And exactly like um, my 5, every time the candle breaks my 5, the price is going to go down, okay? It breaks until it rejects or does not travel within the body then obviously the price will go up until it breaks again it goes down rejects goes up breaks again goes down so it is a candlestick direction <coughs> all right um malo 10 sorry about that okay. malo 10 is exactly the same as um, mahi 10 um, there's um, in your notes there's only one uh, function is to give a much more um, stronger entry much more valid entry which is uh, when the price rejects both malo 5 and malo 10 it will be much more better if it rejects uh, more moving averages or even mid BB okay all right um, also um, in my notes that uh, I also added um, the crossover. So obviously when MALO 5 is below MALO 10, then this is a sell mode. And if there's a crossover like this, MALO 5 is above MALO 10, then this is a buy mode. So let's see um, both of them uh, working together. Let me just delete um, this indicator here. Okay, all right. So um, let's see over here. Obviously, both indicators telling the same stuff. There's a crossover here telling that um, this is sell mode, and this is also sell mode. Over here, the same crossover. However, by indicator tells a much more earlier uh, story here. There's a crossover here. However, the sell indicators are a bit uh, late on that. So. It is very important to use both indicators uh, for for us to derive our um, assumptions and analysis. Okay. And another add-on to um, the crossovers is what I always use. Every time um, 
the moving averages. Uh, opposite moving averages is closing in um, to an uh, opposite indicator that it will the price will go sideways to create a re-entry. Okay, what do I mean by this? Okay, for example, on this one here, MA5 low is going away from MA. Sorry, Mahi 5 is going away from Mahi 10 and is closing into Malo 10 here. When you see this um, happening, then the there is a possib the possibility of the price moving sideways to create re-entry on this time frame or lower. Okay, what do I mean by this? So if there's a, there's a moving averages that closing in towards an opposite uh, av uh, moving averages, then it is creating a re-entry on this time frame or lower. Okay. <coughs> um, another point here. Let me get another example. So, for example, over here, Malo five is exactly over at Mahi ten. The price goes sideways and creates a re-entry on this time frame or lower. Okay. It happens again here, the price goes sideways again to create a re-entry. So that's how uh, you work with the moving averages. So now let's move on to the most strongest, most awesome moving averages of all, the MF50. <clears throat> if you understand how the MF50 works, then obviously it will be uh, much more better for you to uh, understand or uh, analyze where the market is heading to. Okay, so for example, over here um, in your notes, it only tells you that the MA50 is uh, it tells you the trend. If it's above, uh, sorry, if it's below mid BB, then it's an uptrend. If it's above mid BB, then it's a downtrend. Okay, what you need to understand is every time there's a there's a crossover like this, then uh, the sell market has just opened, and the uh, crossover like this, then the buy market has just opened. Okay, okay. But what we need to understand is when the M of 50 is outside the Bollinger Band, then it tells you that the price is going sideways to create a re-entry on a much higher time frame. Okay, so for example over this part over here. Let me add on uh, other stuff. So, on this time frame here, the Bollinger Band goes outside, uh, sorry, the MO50 goes outside of the Bollinger Band and the price goes sideways and upwards. When this happens, then obviously it creates a re-entry on a higher time frame. Okay, so you can see in this time frame you have a re-entry cell on H4 time frame. Okay, um, let's go to H4. So as you can see here, this is an uptrend. This is what we call a zero loss buy. Every time the price goes away from MA50, at some point it has to go back and meet up again with MA50, and the point of where it meets up, if there's a rejection or there's an extreme at that point, that is a re-entry on a higher time frame. So what do I mean by this? Okay. So for example, here the uh, the MA50 is also the Blinker band, and there's a extreme here. So this is an extreme B because the the Blinker band sideways on this part. Okay. There's another one here, extreme division one. Okay. This one's an extreme division one again. Sorry, this one is extreme division. Uh, sorry, extreme C uh, B. Okay, I'll explain that later on. And uh, B B. Uh, sorry, the M50 is also blinking band again. So there's a the re-entry again here, which is extreme B. And here there's another one here, which is extreme B again. So uh, as you can see, there's one, two, three, four five uh, re-entries that I can see on daily uh, daily re-entry buys because this is an uptrend and obviously it's a re-entry buy on a daily level. Okay, 
So let's find those stuff. Okay. Okay. Oh, there you go. So there's one re-entry, two, three, four, and five. So even by looking at an, on a H4 level, you will you will be able to see the re-entry on a higher time frame. So if you understand um, how the MR50 works, then um, you have a much more the, much more better grip on the multi time frame. For example, this is a downtrend, and there's an extreme at MR50 here. So this tells me that there's a re-entry cell on D1. Okay, let me find that box over here. Um, okay. So even though this uh, this part here doesn't tell any story because here it tells me that it breaks Mahi 5 and 10 so it tells me that this is a candlestick direction for buy however H4 tells me that uh, there's another story on H4 that it tells me that this is a re-entry cell on D1 so even though D1 doesn't tell you the story, but this is a hidden re-entry as uh, what I, cat I, categorize, I categorize it. So if you understand how MR50 works, you will be able to see these um, hidden uh, re-entries. Okay? So um, that's all the moving averages uh, on the basic BBMA. Um, now we'll have a quick five-minute break and then we'll move on to signals and setups okay
Okay, um, let's start again. Um, let's move on to um, signal and setup. So obviously um, in uh, BBMA there are four signals. The first one is um, candlestick momentum, which is obviously I already highlighted earlier on. Whenever you have a momentum blinker band, then you have a candle that closes outside blinker band, then this is a uh, candlestick momentum. Okay. So what you need to understand with candlestick momentum is that every first single Every first candlestick momentum will give you one re-entry. Okay, so the first candlestick momentum will allow you to have one re-entry. Okay, and the second one is candlestick arah awal, which is the early direction. Okay, so as you can see, um, let me just um, show it here. So you have extreme A, you have re-entry by, and you have a candle that break. Uh, Malo 5 and Malo 10. So this is uh, candlestick um, early direction. And then you have CS Arakuko, which is the candlestick direction. So over here, the candlestick that breaks through uh, Malo 5 and Malo 10 and also mid BB. Okay. So um, for candlestick direction, how you uh, identify this as a valid uh, candlestick direction is uh, you have to check a uh, lower time frame for momentum okay so here um, you have a momentum and also add M15 so two time frames has to have uh, momentum so as you can see so that's a valid um, candlestick uh, direction and over here I also um, sorry uh, let me get back here I also uh, prepare um, the different types of extreme. So here, um, the first one is um, extreme A, which is uh, MA outside the blinker band. And then um, let's move on to extreme B, when the blinker band is sideways, whenever the candle break or reject, this is extreme B. And here's a good example of extreme CB, whereby uh, the candle rejects M of 50 at uh, within uh, the area of mid BB. Okay, that's extreme CB. Um, extreme B is obviously if a candle uh, does not manage to break top or low BB um, without even the MA going outside. So this is um, what you call extreme D. So the candle couldn't break through. Uh, building events. Um, extreme C A is obviously when the M of 50, uh, sorry, when the candle rejects M of 50 at uh, top or low B B. Is another example over here. Extreme C A, so the candle rejects um, M of 50 at top or low B B. And obviously the last one um, is extreme division one. Um, extreme division one works uh, whenever the can uh, sorry the blinker band is sideways. So when the candle rejects division one, then that's an extreme division one. Okay. So we really need to understand all of these six different uh, extremes because uh, in order for us to um, solidify our analysis based on the BBMA code. So the BBMA code is uh, re-entry extremes. And MHV. Those three, those three things are very important for us to uh, analyze the market. <coughs> so, for example, if you have um, an ex uh, re-entry on um, on a higher time frame, say for example, um, let's say D1. So over here, let me just delete all of this stuff. So um, over here, this is um, EU on a daily. Uh, you have uh, the candle rejects uh, Mahi 5, which is a re-entry cell, okay? And H4, you have uh, an extreme B, and the M of 50 is outside the blinker band, which tells us that there is a re-entry on a higher time frame. And H1 tells us that it's an MHB. How do I know that this is an MHB? You have extreme A, okay? Um, you have TPY chip, and you have a candle that does not break top BB, and you have a reverse candle. Now you're just waiting for the retest of MHB, then it's complete MHB. So you wait until there's a retest, then that's your MHB over there, okay?
So basically for BBMA code, this is a REM, R-E-M. However, what we need to understand here is this is uh, on a daily time frame, this is an uptrend uh, setup, okay? So as I said earlier, every time there is an extreme or rejection at MA50, then this tells us that there is a re-entry on a higher time frame. So if we go to weekly, then if you can see that this might be a re-entry on a weekly level. However, um, here is the last, uh, here is the first CSM, uh, candlestick momentum, and this is the re-entry. And after that, there's an uh, extreme D. There wasn't any more momentum over here. So uh, a re-entry on this level might be kind of like a different uh, story-wise, okay? So we need to understand, uh, we need to make sure that this lower time frame tells us where the market is going first. So if it was me, I would wait for the MHB to be fully uh, MHB when the when the Willinger band already arched downwards and we know what's happening on the lower time frame. So here, we already have um, nearly a full setup of uh, uh, cell uh, over here because you have uh, extreme, TP Wajib, MHB, you have a higher MHB and you have another high MHB and you have a candlestick uh, direction. So if you can see here, this is obviously uh, an example of uh, head and shoulders, okay? And obviously this head can be utilized for another shoulder again, over here, okay? So that's how um, head and shoulder works. So this tells me that M15 is already going downwards, okay? So um, that's how we uh, interpret how the market works. That's um, touching much more now on um, the multi-time frame analysis, okay? So I already touched on um, the signals. Now let's move on to um, the signal, uh, the setup. In BBMA, there's only um, two setups, which is uh, re-entry and also um, uh, MHP. So uh, how does MHB works? So here is a good example of MHB. You have extreme A, TP Wajib, the price goes up, couldn't manage to break top BB, and there's a reverse candle, okay? So whenever you have this, then you have to mark the body of the two. So obviously, um, if you want to narrow it down to much more better um, entry, is uh, use the top of, um, the previous candle. So obviously, whatever whatever candle that goes inside to this highest marking body will be a MHB retest. So obviously, this one is the MHB retest, and this is a point of entry cell. Okay. So when you entry cell on MHB, you have to understand that um, if there is a momentum, a buy momentum here, then that is your cut loss point. If the price reject mid BB, then that's your TP point, TP1. If the price reject division 1, you have to TP because the price is going to go back up again. So if you can check on the on the channel, I, I already made an SOP based on the candlestick direction, which is this one here. And also an SOP on MHB, how you entry, how, where you TP, and how you hold the positions uh, for an MHB entry, and also uh, what happens next after the candlestick direction. Because I'm a scalper, so that SOP is basically on a scalper uh, mode because um, as soon as I see uh, extreme division ones, uh, rejection of low BB, then I already uh, TP my entries and wait for another re-entry after that. Uh, but if you're an intraday trader or you're um, uh, swinger or your holding positions, then obviously um, it's totally up to you where you set your uh, TP point, okay? <coughs> so um, that's how you entry MHB. And obviously, um, for me, my best advice to everyone is um, to entry at the most safest um, entry, which is uh, well, minimal minimal risk entry, which is the re-entry after a candlestick momentum. 
why do I say that this is a minimal risk? Okay, so as I already told um, you all ev earlier on that the Bollinger Band and moving averages are under the category of trends. So when you say it trends, it I mean it's it's the flow of the market where the market is going. Over here, after a CSM, if you notice, all the sell indicators and the buy indicators are all within the sell zone. Okay, mid BB to low BB is the sell zone, and all the moving averages are within the sell zone. Okay, and obviously, if you haven't noticed by now, all the candles are confined within these two pairs of moving averages. Okay, if you can see. Let me just put a line over here. These candles are confined within the moving averages. So obviously, if you, if all these moving averages are within the sell zone, then you know it's a much more safer entry for you. And my biggest advice is you find a CSM. Uh, sorry, you find a re-entry after the first CSM. So this is a good example of that over here, because you have all the moving averages at the particular zone. So um, that's MHB and re-entry. Those are the signals and setups uh, of BBMA. So well, during the explanation of the signals and setups, I already uh, explained much about uh, multi-time frame analysis. Okay. So um, I think it's much more better to um, pick another pair for the multi-time frame analysis. Okay, so is there any uh, suggestions? Me some uh, speak to UJ. Uh, okay, so um, let me just uh, let me just hang on. Let me just open something here. Just give me a few seconds here. Yeah. Okay, um, so um, as you can see, uh, multi-time frame analysis, um, this is my SOP. You don't have to follow it 100%. Um, uh, basically, at some point, you'll be able to uh, make your own um, SOPs. Um, what I do with my analysis is I start with uh, D1 first because I usually trade um, S4 and below. So I just would like to know what's happening on a daily uh, basis, OK? So um, even though I start with daily, however, all of these SOPs need to be um, carried out accordingly um, in sequence, OK? So that you'll be able, you'll be, you, you'll have much more defined or much more uh, systematic way of um, doing your multi-time frame analysis, OK? So um, the first one is um, you check the MO50 position, whether it's below or above MBB, because this will dictate if it's downtrend or uptrend. And then uh, the next thing you need to check is whether the price is at or away MO50. Because if it's at, um, if it's at MO50, then obviously this is a rate entry at a higher time frame. But if it's at away from MA50, then maybe there's a setup on a lower time frame. So instead of going uh, all over the place, you'll be able to narrow down which time frame to look at next. Okay. So um, 
then uh, you need to check whether if MR50 is outside BB. So basically, it's a detection of possible reentry on a higher time frame. Okay. Uh, once you've done that, then you define what type of pulling band it is. If it's sideways or momentum, uh, you check for signals and setup. And then obviously the MA configuration, the con the crossover modes that I've been talking about, the indicator attractions, whereby um, if cell indicator attracts to a buy indicator, which tells you this. Um, the price is going to go sideways to allow a re-entry on that time frame or lower. And obviously, um, if you have learned some other um, techniques, then you can use those techniques to uh, solidify your analysis. Okay? So um, let's uh, go to UJ. Okay, not the simulator one. Okay. So as I said, we go to um, daily. So. Um, Basically, the daily tells me that um, MA50 is just about to cross the mid BB, so which tells me that the the market for buy is just about to open. Okay, and we have a CSM over here and a re-entry. However, over here we have extreme division one, and right now the price is away from MA50. So. When the price is away from MA50, there's a higher chance that the price is going to go back down to MA50 or closer to it. Okay, and here um, is there's not much uh, of uh, stories over here on, apart from this one. This is extreme D. Okay, so this is the first indication that the price might go down on a lower time frame. Okay, so I know for a fact that I have to look lower because there's no setup for a higher time frame because the price is away from MA50. Now I go to H4. Um, okay, H4, um, MA50 first. So basically, MA50 at below mid BB, so you know it's an uptrend market, same as D1. And however, you have um, a sell setup on on um, S4 because you have extreme A, you have candlestick uh, direction, and then you have another extreme A here, uh, candlestick early direction, and then you have CS Arakuku over here, and you have a possible re-entry at this point. So there's a possibility that this is a re-entry cell. Okay, so so this tells me the price might go down, and the Blinger band is still sideways. It's not really uh, uh, it's a sideways over here. Then we move on to H1. Then H1, there's a consolidation uh, happening over here. Uh, you know that uh, whenever a time frame is going sideways, and obviously you know that uh, it is creating a re-entry on a much higher time frame. Okay? And as you can see, the sell indicators are on the buy zone, the buy indicators are on the sell zone. So obviously there's uh, a battle between uh, sell and buy at this point. And you can see MA50 is at the middle of uh, the park. So it's the middle of BB, okay? So um, over here, the price, if you have noticed that this is sideways Bollinger Band and the price could barely manage to break through division one. So there's a higher possibility that price is going to go down. And this here is a rejection of I mean, 50 at MBB. So this is extreme CB. Okay? So you have re-entry at H4 and you have extreme CB at H1. So the final confirmation will be at M15. Okay? So let's look at M15. Um, M15 is also... Um, a cell setup. However, you have extreme cell here, extreme buy here, and you have a rejection of top BB uh, over here, but no extreme A cell. Uh, this is extreme B because the sideways uh, blinger band, and you have lost momentum over here, extreme division one, and the price is still uh, going sideways. So obviously, there's no. Uh, there, I mean, the direction of the market is not uh, defined yet because H1 is going sideways. Whenever H1 is going sideways, then obviously it will be creating a re-entry on a much higher time frame than H4. So obviously H4 is still um, going sideways as well. And D1, there's a possibility that this might be a re-entry on, on D1. So 
the price going down is a possibility that it might create a re-entry on D1. Okay, so I would I would look for a re-entry on this uh, zone part at M of 50, as you can see here. Let me um, so we can do some back tests over here. So you have an extreme at M of 50 on an uptrend at H4. You have rejection and Okay, that's those are the two, and you also have MO50 outside, and there's a re-entry over there. Okay, so there's a three possibility of uh, re-entries on a daily basis. So the first one here, and second one. Okay, the the first one was actually for H4. Oh, sorry, the second one was actually for H4. So if you can see, uh, there's a there's a possibility that the price might be um, going towards Malo 5 and 10 of uh, daily. So this sell setup on lower time frames might be um, going for that uh, particular target. So if you know those targets, then now we already have uh, made a, a rough analysis on where the market is heading for UJ. So what we need to do is um, how do we solidify this um, information? What other means can we use? So obviously, if you have learned about uh, FMCBR, if you can pull um, Fibonacci retracement and stuff like that, so obviously you can use all of those things to um, to, to support your um, your analysis. Okay. So um, let's say for example on this one, maybe you can. Uh, Pull your um, your cell fibo on H1 to see where where it's going. Okay, so obviously it's at the uh, pullback area. So let's see where TP1 lands. So if you can see here, TP1 lands exactly at um, daily reentry. So you know you can use all of this stuff to solidify your um, your uh, analysis and then obviously H4 let me just check here at H4 um, it tells me that um, there's a reversal diversion over here so basically um, it tells me that the eight awesome oscillator tells me that um, the price is going to go down. However, this one tells me a different story. So I usually follow this. So there's a, a guide on Awesome Oscillator, uh, the channel. So look for that as well. So you can use all of those uh, other stuff to solidify your um, analysis. So I can see here that obviously this is a this is a sell market. So I would aim for a sell on uh, on next week, something like that. Okay. And then if you're not uh, satisfied with that, then obviously um, this is a, a, a USD JPY. So I would look for another JPY uh, market to see whether it's roughly going towards the same as my analysis. So um, here, for example, um, there's EJ here open. So if EJ tells me roughly exactly where it's going, then obviously it's probably the same. So D1 is, I already can see that it's a cell setup. You have extreme A, you have CS uh, direction early, and you have a re-entry. So that's a setup over there. H4 tells me that there's extreme A, also uh, BB sideways. And H1 tells me an MHB happening over here. So that's already REM. So it tells me that the price is going to go down. So that's EJ. Um, let's find another J uh, market. And let's go for AJ. Um, OK, let's go for D1. D1 exactly the same, uh, much more farther away. So you have um, extreme A. You have um, candlestick direction. H4 tells me that is already going down. M50 over here, extreme CA, uh, CB. And you have the market going down already, uh, so it's much more faster. Um, sorry, EJ is just about to start, and UJ is at the very beginning. So I would, I mean, I would like to see what happens with uh, UJ on next week. So I mean, um, that's how you 
you do your analysis. Um, I already provided the 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 SOPs for that in in the the channel. So do look it up, and maybe you can you know you can use this as a template and make your own SOP. So it helps you, it guides you what to look at um, during your multi time frame analysis, because each and every one of these um, indicators will tell you the story of where the market is going, especially the Bollinger Band and also the moving averages. Please uh, do some back tests on MA50 as well. So I think um, we're pretty much done for today. And I hope that um, the, what do you call this, the webinar is quite useful to all of you. Um, so before I end the session, um, if there's anyone who wants to uh, ask some question, please do so. Okay, so uh, Misham uh, asked me if uh, this applies to all currency, uh, even gold. So to be honest with you, it applies to all currencies. If you're using BBMA, then this is, uh, I mean, I have, I've been using this um, SOP. Uh, it applies to whatever currencies that you're trading with. Um, as long as you understand uh, BBMA, you understand the functions of all the moving averages and the blinker band, you understand and you uh, memorize um, uh, what are the what are the characteristics of MHB, what are the characteristics of reentry, how do you validate uh, candlestick direction, all of this simple stuff. If you combine it all together, then you will have a much more bigger picture of what's happening and you'll have much more confident on your um on your uh, analysis okay um awang kabus was asking about extreme d uh, he wants me to give another example okay so okay let me just uh, go find a good example extreme d all right so here so you can see the market is moving upwards but um the candle rejects stop BB, or it can be on low BB, but this one is an up, upward, is much more like a momentum linger band. So this is an extreme D, okay? So you use extreme D during a momentum linger band um, when the candle rejects stop BB or low BB. Okay, this is uh, extreme D. <coughs> okay, any other questions? Okay, um, if there's no more questions, then I think I'll end the uh, uh, webinar for now. And I think I'll make one webinar next week on Malay version, uh, hopefully. Um, so I think that's it. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.